everyone. My name is Sarah. I'm with homeschoolingandhomesteading.com, a Teachers Pay Teachers store that specializes in lesson plans and curricula for homeschoolers. Today, I'm going to show you some techniques of wet felting. This accompanies the lesson plan in the collection Crafts for Elementary Aged Children. And all you need in order to be able to wet felt and make all sorts of crafts, such as marbles. You can glue a acorn top on and make it into a colorful little acorn. And I've made little chains of acorns to decorate my Christmas tree with before. All you need in order to do this craft is some wool. And I will put at the end of this video some resources where you can find nice, beautifully colored wool. You need a bowl of warm water with just a few drops of dishwashing liquid in it and a towel because you're going to get a little wet. So let's roll up our sleeves and let's get started felting. First, what you wanna do is choose your colors and then pull off just a little bit of the wool to start with and I like to make what's called a cloud, a puffy little cloud. What you're gonna do is take it in your hand and your hand is nice and cupped in kind of a, a bowl shape. Dip your wool into the warm water. It's not gonna be a cloud anymore when you pull it out. <laughs> Squeeze it out gently and then take your little ball of wool that you had, which is a deflated cloud now, and with your two hands, you want to shape your hands both in sort of a bowl shape and start rolling them like you're rolling a piece of clay to make a ball. Now notice when I'm rolling, my hands aren't pressed together. If you press your hands together, you're going to make a pancake of wool you'll start feeling your little cloud of wool start compacting as you roll the wool between your cupped hands. Now there's a several things that wool needs in order for it to felt. It needs warmth, which it got from the warm water and my warm hands. It needs moisture, which also came from the warm water and it needs something called agitation. That's basically a big word that means movement, which is what we're doing right now. Wool is a really neat fiber. If you look at it underneath a microscope, it has these little almost barbs on it. If you imagine Velcro, how it sticks together, Velcro is like a bunch of hooks on one piece of it and the other side is a bunch of loops. So the hooks go into the loops. Wool is sort of similar in that it does have barbs on it, but what happens is those barbs get meshed together and they get tangled together. So when you felt it, when you add warmth, moisture, and agitation, and you felt wool, it ends up getting all tangled together so it can't be pulled apart. So that's the difference between wool and Velcro. Now, my little wool cloud has started. I can feel it between the palms of my hands. It's gotten much denser. And so I can start pressing harder as I make the wool ball. It's not going to flatten out into a pancake anymore. So this way, I can already see this little ball of wool has started to compact and it's already much harder than it was. Now, you can pretty much be done whenever you feel your little uh, wool marble is whenever you feel it's the right size and the right uh, density. If you can squeeze it, you can keep felting it further because you can actually felt something so it gets into a really hard little object. You should leave it out in the sun or even in like a nice breezy kind of warm area to let it dry out for a few days. You can search outside and find your perfect acorn top. There's lots of shapes of acorn tops. And then using a little bit of hot glue or even 
your school Elmer's glue. You can put it along the edge of your acorn top and press it to your wool ball and then you'll end up with a fun looking colorful acorn. So remember please visit www.homeschooling.com to get more information about felting and other crafts that you can do as a homeschooler and beyond. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see any other updates and other videos that we post. Thanks for watching.